all you people watching! Hello everyone, Darman here, the inventor of curry. Today, I'm gonna be talking about McJuggernuggets. He currently has over 4 million subscribers on YouTube. He initially rose to fame after he created the Psycho series, but noted a dramatic decrease in viewership after it ended. In addition, he told people he was leaving to a new platform called Storyfire, but continued to upload to YouTube. Sadly, Storyfire was a financial failure and sold as an NFT for about $15,000. This is the rise and fall of McJuggernuggets. Before I get into the video, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Privacy.com. Privacy lets you buy things online using virtual cards instead of real ones, protecting your identity and bank information on the internet. Right now, new customers will automatically get $5 to spend on their first purchase. Go to privacy.com slash internet to sign up now. Privacy makes it super easy to manage your financial lives online while keeping your most important information secure. By generating virtual numbers, it masks your bank information so you never have to worry about giving it out to people you don't know online. With privacy, you can take back control of your payments and decide who can charge your card, how much, and how often. Do you buy from the same subscription service every month like Netflix? Merchant cards can be used as many times as you'd like with the same merchant to ensure that a breach doesn't put you at risk. Also, you can make sure that you are never accidentally billed twice or upgraded without your consent. All you have to do is set a spending limit. Or you can pause a subscription that you are not currently using like DoorDash and Privacy.com will block the charge. You don't need to jump through difficult customer service hoops, simply pause your card. Privacy offers different plans catered to your individual or business goals. If you're looking for added benefits, earn 1% cash back on all your purchases on the Pro Plan. Or if you are a small business owner and need to easily monitor shared expenses, look into the Team Plan. With Privacy, you have total control and can close your cards at any time. Making purchases online with Privacy.com is super simple and fast. You can create virtual cards with just a click. You can also use the Privacy.com browser extension. By automatically detecting checkout fields on a web page with just a click, you can create and autofill a dynamic number into the checkout form. Head to Privacy.com slash Internet AJ and sign up for an account. Remember, new customers will automatically get $5 to spend on their first purchase. Go to Privacy.com slash Internet AJ and sign up now. I personally love it because it gives me an extra layer of security and peace of mind. Now back to the video. McJuggernuggets' real name is Jesse Ridgway and he created his YouTube channel on December 9, 2006. He was an early user of the platform and was only 14 years old when he started out. In order to understand his brand, you first have to realize that freakout videos were a popular genre in the early 2010s. I'm sure we all remember watching in awe as the World of Warcraft kid tried to stick a remote up his ass because his mom canceled his account. In fact, that video inspired me to stick things up my own Shit, sorry, TMI. Most of these freakout videos were fake, but people still loved the content. It was just fascinating to watch someone explode on screen and make a fool of themselves. There were other big YouTubers who made careers off of freakout videos like Boogie2988's Raging Francis character and Angry Grandpa. Hopping on this trend, Jesse created the Psycho series which featured his two brothers and father. His first video of the series was posted on December 12, 2012 and called Psycho Dad Destroys Xbox. In it, Jesse's father threw his Xbox in a fireplace and then smashed it. As of today, the video has about 26 million views. Many of the videos featured the destruction of items, including but not limited to games, a laptop, and even a car. However, the thing that set the series apart was that it had a real storyline and felt personal. The videos weren't just random, unadulterated rage clips, but rather an organized and scripted show. Ridgway and his real-life family were characters in a relatable production. For example, in the Psycho series, Jesse was an aspiring YouTuber who wanted to impress his father, which struck a chord with many of his viewers. Notably, when asked, Jesse claimed the series was real in a Q&A. Now let's get to the very first question on everybody's mind and why you clicked on the freaking video. Are the psycho videos real? Are the psycho videos fake? And so you guys don't have to scroll through the video to find out the videos are real. This has not ever been a question. For those of you guys who watch my other content, you guys watch my vlogs, you guys know the in-betweens and follow me on Twitter, tune into the stream. It's no doubt that these videos are real. This is shit I have to deal with. And there's a lot of questions surrounding that. So let me tackle as many as I can to make you guys happy. Because for a while, I've been avoiding as many questions as possible about these events because, quite frankly, I don't want to have to think about them constantly because it sucks. So, you know what? I decided to just remove the curtain and tell you guys these videos are real. This is my life. And it's time to come clean and answer any questions you guys have about my personal life. One of the reasons the series was so successful was because of the incredibly frequent upload schedule. New videos and vlogs were posted about two times per day. 
This allowed viewers to build a bond with Jesse's characters since he was always putting out content. And while Ridgeway's series ran for three and a half years and consisted of about 50 episodes and 684 vlogs which resulted in the channel amassing millions of subscribers. Sadly, Jesse decided to end it on June 6, 2016 in a video called Psycho Kid Kills Father. That's the last thing you say to me. Is that the video games made me this way? The games? No, Dad. It was you! You! You made me this way! You made me this way! Jesus oh. Christ, Jesse, what are you doing? Back the f up! Back the f up! I guess you could say he went out with a bang. Heh <laughs> heh Sorry, I'm cringe. Jesse's emotions, tone of voice, and mannerisms were particularly exceptional in that scene. He and his family were such good actors that some of his viewers actually thought he murdered his father. In August 2016, Ridgway posted a video called The Hardest Video I've Ever Had to Film. In it, he revealed multiple reasons for why he ended the popular show. He first said he was mentally disturbed and burned out. Part of me actually shot my dad, and, and part of me was yelling at my dad, and, and part of me still thinks my parents split up. And, and you know, playing all these characters, I think, has kind of f***ed up a little bit mentally. Like, I, I don't feel all there, but I don't think I ever was, so that's, that's, that's totally fine. He then stated he sacrificed his health and lost friendships. I'm just, for whatever reason, I, I need a break. And uh, it's not really a bad thing. It's not like I'm leaving YouTube or anything. I, I, I want you guys to know I am 100% committed to you, 100% loyal to YouTube as a platform. I have every the YouTube has made me who I am today, and you guys as viewers have been there for me when times have been tough and have made this a career for me. Like, so during the Psycho series, I sacrificed my health. I had my, my spleen injury, which was an adhesion, and I had to get surgery for it last year. I had sacrificed my health for a year and a half, just doing two episodes a day, two episodes a day, two episodes a day. I lost a lot of friendships because I was working so much. I became distant with a lot of other people that I've since had to try and mend those relationships. And it was all just to tell my story and to tell it to you guys to hopefully help you. And I sacrifice a lot. It was understandable why Jesse chose to move on from the Psycho series considering the significant toll it had on his mental and physical health. Unfortunately, it marked the beginning of his downfall. His views tanked after that and he never figured out a way to capture his audience's interest. Over the years, he slowly started to fade away. Shockingly, in September 2019, Jesse's brother Jeffrey posted a video called Exposing the Truth About My Brother McJuggernuggets. In it, he claimed Jesse's videos were always uploaded first and that he felt less important. Because as most of you are aware, my brother and I, in most instances, are filming the exact same subject matter. Historically you, dude. You're always filming when I'm filming and you're trying to capture my viewership. And, as most of you are aware, his generally goes up first on YouTube. And in that case, mine is kind of the lesser video. He then stated if he ever disagreed with Jesse, he would get placed on his shit list and punished with the script change. And if you were to go against anything that he was saying, then he was going to put you on his shit list. And unfortunately for myself, I was a frequent visitor on this list. Uh, if he was going to say something that I didn't agree with, or he wanted to take the characters in a, in a way that I didn't agree with, I would voice my opinion but it would end up in a screaming match, and then next thing you know, my role has changed. Let me explain. For those of you that remember, and if not, you can go back to the video, just type in the search engine. It was Psycho Brothers Kung Fu Freak Out, where I had to dress up in a, I think it's a Gaia attire, and I had the makeup and everything, and this was never previously discussed. This was never a plan, but this plan came up literally a day before the video was shot. And I was heading down with Short on that day. But I support my brother and I wanted to be there. So I said, okay. What I didn't realize was that he wanted me to do some embarrassing things. He wanted me to be stripped down into tidy whities basically. And he wanted me to flash the camera because it was going to be portrayed as Jesse, the character, was embarrassing me intentionally. Whereas Jesse, the creator, was writing this to intentionally embarrass me because I had disagreed with the direction that we were going at the time. Notably, Jeffrey also pointed out Jesse's toxic side when he mentioned he made his character more submissive in order to control him. He viewed me as a risk. And 
he found a really good way of eliminating that risk. If you guys recall, there was a video where I had attacked my brother and was further attacked by his cameraman, Zachary Kornatzer. And then I had a bottle broken over my head, which was a breakaway bottle. And then my character had this big meltdown. After this time, my character became this very submissive, I, like restricted, they, he, he didn't do much of anything, he wasn't controversial, he wasn't, he wasn't loud, he wasn't vocal, he didn't really do much of anything. Imagine having a YouTube channel where everything prior to that you were one way, and then all of a sudden you had to portray yourself as somebody that was uninterested, uninteresting, submissive, and it, it, you, you can't do it. You can't produce the content that everybody had signed up for. After the video was released, it seemed Jesse was significantly more toxic than he let on. In order to save his reputation, he responded by claiming he deserved credit for encouraging Jeffrey and others to start their YouTube channels. You have your YouTube channel for a full-time job, bro! And who, who encouraged you to start that? Who convinced you to start that channel? Who gave you all kinds of content throughout the Psycho series and beyond? Getting Buzz a channel, Georgia channel, Corna channel, uh, Parker channel, you know, helping Swift's channel, Dom's channel, I'm like being in their videos. Jeffrey then replied by saying it was egotistical for him to imply that he gifted them their careers. That you go, you went ahead and gifted everybody their channels. And what, what, this infuriates me to no end because everybody that has their channels and has consistently uploaded, or maybe they stopped, maybe they, maybe life got in the way and they haven't been able to keep up with it recently. But to say that you gave them these things, you didn't give them these things. They appeared in your videos, people liked them, they wanted to produce their own content, people subscribed to their channels for them. By doing this, you're completely discounting the fact that their content is worthwhile at all. Overall, the drama between the brothers was public and messy. Many also weren't even sure if the drama was real considering how good the two were at acting. But after Jeffrey later released a video exposing Jesse's girlfriend as fake, followed by Psycho Dad exposing Jesse, it was apparent the drama was all fabricated. The series was just being continued in a dramatic and excessive manner. On September 18th, 2019, Jesse wrote this on Twitter. It said, as of January 1st, 2020, I will no longer be making content for YouTube. This has not been an easy decision to make and one that I've struggled with for the last couple years. To put it frankly, I can no longer support a platform that doesn't have my best interest at heart. Ridgway then announced that he and his co-founder Brian created a new platform called Storyfire, which was designed to be a competitor to YouTube. He stated he was leaving YouTube on January 1st, 2020 and was going to post exclusively on Storyfire. I really want to emphasize, guys, this is not a series. This is not a clickbait video. I will be officially quitting YouTube as of January 1st, 2020. Fortunately, many creators were receptive to Storyfire because they had had enough of YouTube's random demonetization practices, sudden rule changes, and a horrid lack of communication. On top of that, Storyfire was healthy competition and would break YouTube's monopoly. Overall, it was a bright idea, but unfortunately, the execution was nothing short of terrible. The platform was extremely buggy, the user interface was poor, and the algorithm was oversimplified. As a result, no one really wanted to use it. On January 1st, 2020, McJuggernuggets posted a nearly 30-minute video called My Last Video on YouTube, confirming he would in fact be leaving. Juggies, this is the last video I'll ever make on YouTube. However, just three weeks later, he continued to post on YouTube, which confused fans who had already given him an emotional goodbye. In February 2020, Jesse uploaded another video called Storyfire is Shutting Down. In it, he said Storyfire ran out of money and was shocked at the lack of investor interest. To put it simply, why Storyfire is shutting down is we run out of money. We cannot financially support the cost of running the platform. A lot of the last six months has been spent trying to get financing. And this is traditionally what a tech startup would do. Uh, they try to raise money from angel investors, VCs, friends and family, pretty much anyone they can get their hands on to try and fund this uh, big idea. For the entire duration of Storyfire, I've been the only person putting money into this thing and I was excited for this year because this was when we were gonna make a big explosion and we did and we took months and months of meetings with VCs angels you name it and unfortunately after 30 35 40 meetings we were unable to close anything we weren't even able to get a small bite this came as quite a shock notably Jesse failed to realize the reason investors were hesitant was due to the fact Storyfire was riddled with problems from an objective point of view it was not a realistic competitor Editor to YouTube. Not long after the video though, McJuggernuggets posted another video called Storyfire Has Been Saved. 
In it, he revealed Storyfire received capital last minute from a mysterious investor and wasn't going to shut down. Here's the deal. You know that investor? Have you heard of him? Yes. Wait, how the f do you know him? He's my boy. I, I've hung out with him a ton. I, he's from the same okay. area. Okay, right. He saw your video, called me about it, was like, what is going on? He's offered to throw some cash in. And I actually want to throw some cash in. However, viewers felt this was kind of fishy and seemed like an elaborate marketing scheme. And well, as it turned out, it was. In a later video, Jesse R. Wright said he was the mysterious investor. His behavior was questionable because he played with the emotions of his viewers by bringing them on a journey that turned out to be staged. Coffeezilla even made a video calling him out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the boy who cried story fire. Now let me say right up front, this is gonna be a tough line for me to walk because it's a story I think should be told, but it's also a balance, okay? Because there's some juicy lies things in here that normally I would make fun of, really get some enjoyment out of, some laughs out of. But at the same time, I also believe in this guy's mission. And you know you seriously fudged up when that happens. On April 1st, 2021, Jesse posted a tweet saying that Storyfire was bought by Amazon for $30 million. Super excited to announce that Storyfire has officially been acquired by Amazon for $30 million. The journey is not over, but rather just beginning. Brian and I are remaining on the project as we now have massive infrastructure to grow this platform to new heights. Stay lit. However, the tweet was an obvious April Fool's joke, which in my opinion was in bad taste considering the punchline was that the platform was doing so awful it would never be bought by Amazon. And well, the next day, Jesse tweeted he was going to sell Storyfire as an NFT with a starting bid of $1. An app worth $3 million can be yours for $1. Storyfire NFT Auction. Sadly, when all was said and done, Storyfire sold for about 8 Ethereum, or roughly $15,000 at the time. The sale was particularly painful considering Jesse invested about $3 million into it, making it a massive financial loss. Ultimately, McJuggernuggets had a tough rise and fall. He entertained millions with the Psycho series, but after it ended, his channel declined significantly. And when Jesse attempted a new business venture with Storyfire, it sadly didn't go as planned. Hopefully, one day Jesse can revive his channel, utilizing his impeccable acting and filmmaking skills. Many people love the complex storylines of the Psycho series, and perhaps he can make something as entertaining again. Personally, I think it's definitely possible, but recommend he implements a less demanding upload schedule so he doesn't burn out like last time. Who knows and only time will tell. Whatever happens, I wish Jesse the best. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving me a big thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. Oh, and feel free to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at internetaj. See you in the next one.